you have the EFI that you can boot from. So now I'm going to show you how to create an EFI folder with Open Core. So Open Core, if you go to Open Core Release. So right now is 6.3. I don't know how I download this. 0.6.4, but I think <clears throat> you have an open core folder. In the boot, you have to have the open core boot correspond to the 0.4, 0 0.6.4, or 0 0.6.3. Then you open the open core. So in the EFI folder, if you have an open core folder already and the boot, so the boot will boot into the open core folder, OC. So there's a three folder that are important. So the ACPI. So in order to boot with the ACPI for all, Big Sur, Catalina, or whatever, what you need is this one right here, and you also need this one here for the laptop. So this one right here is for you to boot with the EC embedded controller. This one is for power. So this one is for the power for this one to whenever you use the CPU. So the PNLF is for the dimmer. So if you don't have the display that has this brightness that means your PNLF is not loaded. Inside whatever green you will have the PNLF. So what you need to do is to open it and then you save it as file formats ACPI machine. So I renamed this one to 144.AML. So I know that this PNLF is for 14.4. We take this one, we put it in the ACPI folder. We mark it so that we know that what we need for our ACPI. All right. So now the ACPI, so this one PNLF, so we can change this one, underscore 144. Yes, and the path, make sure you have the same name as the one in the ACPI. All right, so you got these three. These are the one that I patch for my SSDT, but actually you don't really need all of these SSDT from the original ACPI. So now you look, you need the plug for the power. It's called ACPI Power Management. And then you have the ACPI USB, USB X laptop for the embedded controller. The last one you need for the ACPI is you have to pass the UIAC for your particular model. And I have a tutorial on this one to get all the USB power to work. Without this, your Wi-Fi may not work, your Broadcom, your Bluetooth may not work, your sound may not work. Okay? So make sure you have this one. This is MacBook Pro 132, so I named that. So if you look in here, if you use the UIAC, so what you're going to go to, so you go in here, Rehab man, he's the man. So you look at this. You download this one. And you're going to choose whatever is correct with your... I have a tutorial on this, so you better watch that one. So what do you have in the ACPI folder? The ACPI, you must add the patch DSDT, the PNLF for the brightness, you have to have the plug for your ACPI power management 
and you have the EC and battery controller for it to boot and the final is your USB power port created for your system so what do you need to add so the block I never touch it I never turn it on but it's it's just there so what's in the device property that's so important so the device property right here if you open for the full acceleration on your graphics you need to patch using the hacking tools so the display right now what does it have you patch so right now Skylake HD 5200 you can patch what do you want to patch so all you want to patch your graphic device audio device and actually I don't need the audio device but it's okay PCI device this one it will show your Wi-Fi the DW 1620 so advanced what they have so now if you have a Dell you better make sure you check this because it's gonna have a instant reboot I don't do anything else okay so generate patch so let's see generate patch so what you're gonna do alternate A alternate C alternate V save as let's put it on desktop Skylake devices PL right okay make sure you have the extension so you look inside a device property so what do you what you're looking for is your graphics so PCI 00, zero PCI 02 this guy you see right there you just take this one you copy it and then you put in here you add it in here so why do I have this uh, frame buffer these are the one I patch for my this one has the uh, display port connector so the display port connector on this elite book come out with the purple color so I need to patch these to make it come out perfect if you don't have the display controller this display port just HDMI you just copy exactly as this one and put it over there this platform IDs is the important one so this one right here is for your graphic to boot with full acceleration so the next one I want is a PCI 01C 03 so this is my airport extreme okay network controller why don't I use the uh, audio because with the Apple ALC all you need is to add in the boot argument ALC ID so the next one you want is very important which is the drivers the driver will be in the UEFI drivers I only put one two three four five in here they have a whole bunch of them but I don't use all of them is the Kex the good thing about the open core is whenever I open any of my config file I know which one of the CACs I use unlike Clover you can put a whole bunch of them in there and they will load all of them which is you don't know which one you actually use so for the CACs you go to kernel you add 
all the cats that you need to use. But with open core, you have to have them in the correct sequence for them to work. So what is the first one you need? Lilu. So for the Big Sur, Catalina or whatever, you need the newest version, 1.4.9. Number two, you use, if you have the uh, Synaptics trackpad, you use PS2 controller CAX, but I use the Rehab Man 1.9.2 Virtual SMC dot CAX. So this is Virtual SMC. Whatever green. So if your evergreen is not the right one, you won't have full acceleration on your graphics. So this one I use 1.4.4. The next one you want is Codec Commander. So the Codec Commander is for your white, your audio to wake up and work. But sometimes, depends on your laptop, if you cannot get the sound, to work then you can disable this one sometimes this one block it all right but mine's working so the next one you want is the ALC so the ALC is for your sound my ALC on this one is connection all right it's not uh, real tech so what do I use for this one? I still put the ALC, but I have to choose the correct ALC ID 13 for it to work. I also have a tutorial on this. The next one I want is USB inject all. This is from the Rehab Man. This version I use is 0.6.5. The next one I use on this is Intel Mousey.cax, which is for my Ethernet on this one. So the next one you want is Voodoo Input Cax. One thing about this is that the position of this one, if you don't do it correctly, you won't have the trackpad. So I'm going to click it in here. So Voodoo Input but the PS2 controller got to go first then you have the keyboard which is inside now the voodoo input the CAX is a separate one and is version 1.0.6 so all the other one keyboard and trackpad and mouse all these are inside the rehab man USB plug-in PS2 controller CAX then the executable path inside you have to check and make sure that if they have the Mac OS if they don't delete this one so right now let's look at voodoo mouse show package content content so this one have Mac OS so you look here it's there now that is for your trackpad. So you need four things. Actually five. The main one is PS2 controller CAX from Rehab Man. Then you start adding all. You start to add the Voodoo input CAX. Then the other three, actually five of them, to get the trackpad to work. So the next one is that if you have DW1560 or DW1820A, like mine, you need airport fix up. The newest one, which is 2.1.1, injector, Bluetooth injector, firmware data, and by the way, these must be in order. And then the last one is a patch RAM 3. It's all these three are 2.5.5 from the Open Core website. Now, in Big Sur, the battery will not show up if you use the SMC battery management .cax. So enable is no. ACPI battery management .cax is one you need to use. That's from Rehab Man. So this version I use 
is 1.81.4. The next one you want is SMC processor. So in here, you must have that SMC processor. All right, I don't know what version I use here. 1.1.4 is fine. And then Super I.O. So my Super I.O. never loaded, so I put no. I don't load this one. NVMe fix.cax. So if you're going to use NVMe 1.0.2 with the Big Sur, sometimes you don't see the SATA connection which is the internal. So you need this Catalina AHCI port dot kex. Here, this one. Now make sure you have the min kernel of 20.0.0. So I don't use any block. I don't use any patches. The court is important. So it depends on your laptop. One thing I noticed, this XHCI port limit, some of them, if you don't, if you turn it on, it will have, it will get stuck at the USB. So for instance, this is the Skylake i7-6600U. I use YES for this HP Elite Book. But for my NV, this one has to be no. So if you get stuck at the USB when you boot, make sure that you toggle this one yes or no for it to boot. Okay? Miscellaneous. I don't use Blast Overdrive because Open Core will have the boot cam for you to boot into Windows already. You don't need any of these. On the boot, so this is what I use. Now, I use the picker mode external so I can see the graphics, the display of the icon. So for that, you need to get resources. So the resources, they have audio, but a lot of time, if your EFI folder, the internal is 300 meg or less, you can delete every single one in here because you don't actually use any of these WAV files. So look at this, how big this one is. This one is 95 meg already. You don't need the audio, okay? So you have to go and get the correct font. Actually, you have to go to get the correct resource folder and all the images and the label for your particular version of the open core. So 0 0.6.4, 0 0.6.3. So you have to look for this one, the resource for it to display correctly. For the people that has a DW 1560 or DW 1820, you need the BC, you need to add into the boot argument BRCMFX dash driver equal to 2 for this Wi Fi to work. So all of these extra stuff blocking and stuff I don't use any legacy well whatever's in there I left it in there I didn't even touch so that's the NVRAM so the NVRAM is extremely important that's the boot the next one is debug the target is zero I don't debug anything entry nothing security so I only use scans policy zero because it seems like I don't understand how, how to use the scan policy and you put a number in there all right I want everything the tools I don't turn on any tools 
So I don't need any tools. So the NVRAM we just covered. UEFI. Now this is also important. So I use the old one. So they have the APFS. Yes, yes, yes. Audio, I just left it there. What else? So the driver. So like I said, I only use five of these in the EFI folder, which is the uh, driver folders. Here. There's a whole bunch of them, but I only use these five. Five, actually, not four. So the input. See, when you keep all of these the same, you can boot from anything except a few things. The XHCI port. So this one, I don't really touch it. Output. So also the output depends. But I only use yes on two of them. And everything else is no. Protocol override. Now this one sometimes will break if you don't do it right. So Apple boot policy, I always put it there. Apple key map, I would put it there. Device property, I would put it there. Everything else is no. Watch out for the quirk on the UEFI. The duplicate boot order, yes. But some of them, I commanded this one out. But anyway, on this one, it works. Ignore invalid flex ratio, you need this one. Also, release USB ownership. On this particular laptop, I use no and it boot. Some other one, you have to turn it on for it to work. So if you don't, if you got stuck or instant reboot, you check this one. If you boot from the USB control, uh, flash drive, okay? This one you need. This one you need. So again, this UEFI quirk, the release of USB ownership depends on your laptop. You may have to turn it on. For this particular one, it's off. Now, platform info is very important, is that you have to choose the correct SM BIOS for yours. And you should have Data Hub, Generic. Anyway, this one does not have the NVRAM. I should have the NVRAM on this one, but it seems like it's not important. So if so, the ROM here is actually your Ethernet, MAC address, or your Wi-Fi, whatever is in the EN0. So whatever is in the EN0 then you put the MAC address of that EN0 is. The one for my NV doesn't have the Ethernet, so I use the EN0, which is the Wi-Fi. So you can add the platform and NVRAM to make sure. If you get the config correctly, you only need to change a few things to get yours working, which is the release of USB ownership, and the XSCI port. Those two are the ones that kill. Now, for people who couldn't get the iMessage or FaceTime to work, you better make sure that you have no errors in iMessage debug. Run it many times. So that's what an EFI folder that keep, people keep asking me sent me the link. If you can download the CAX that is needed, the drivers is already there. Look at the driver here. You need the HFS Plus. I never use NTFS. So you need the open canopy if you want to use icon graphic when you boot. So now you have a driver, you have a CAX, you have an ACPI, and you have a resource, and you have a good config. It will boot. But now, when you get it to boot from Big Sur, you can use the same EFI folder to boot for Catalina or anything. Okay, so Big Sur is the hardest one, and the Catalina. So don't ask me for the EFI folder. 
This is how you create. If you can create your own EFI folder, you can hack any of the PC or the laptops. You only have a few more years before they go completely to the ARM.